I've been making this pulled pork burger for 17 years straight and it never ceases to amaze me. Now let's go! Let's make this barbecue spice rub. Super easy, white sugar, brown sugar, and you can use this for all kinds of barbecue, not just pork, obviously, but it is great on pork. Paprika, ginger powder, mustard powder. This one's kind of optional, but I'm doing some chipotle powder, garlic powder, onion powder, some rosemary salt, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, I'm gonna put a link in the corner right now, which is a homemade herb salt we make on this channel. You can just replace this, obviously, with kosher salt, though, no problem. And Sergeant Gilbert reporting for Dude, He's just a, that's a pepper grinder. It's pepper, okay? Simple as that, it's not that weird. Straight in, and that's it. Just give that a really good mix. Oh man, it smells so good, it smells so good. Now here I have some Boston butt roast, but you could also use shoulder as well, whatever you wanna do. And there is quite a lot of fat on here, so I am gonna trim off just a little bit of it, like so. Also that fat kinda dries out a little bit. This fat underneath is a lot nicer and softer and will take to the seasoning better. Don't have to go too crazy with that. Just trim it up a little bit. Basically just gonna cover these things in the seasoning. Don't be shy now. We're gonna get these on all sides. Oh yeah, I love doing this. Just try to dip up all this other stuff. Cover, there we go. Now it's actually only 8 p.m. right now here and I don't wanna put these into the oven until midnight. So leaving them here in the seasoning until that time can only do them a lot of good. So I just put a pan with water here on the bottom rack of the oven and I've got my pork on a sheet pan with a rack and that's just gonna go in. The oven is set to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to bed. Say good night, Ollie. Say good night, they love you. They love you, they wanna see you. More of you, yes. All right, that took a lot longer than I expected. So today I found out that my oven is a liar. It's sitting right there in the kitchen. It sees everything that's happening to the fridge all the time and yet it still lies. <sighs> Silly oven. So I had these in the oven overnight at 2.50. My oven was at like 2.20, I checked in the morning, so apparently it lies. So right now, it's literally 12.45 the next day. These things have been cooking for 12 hours and 45 minutes. But if your oven doesn't lie, this could take anywhere from seven to 10 hours, depending on the size of the pork chunk that you are using. And all I did was turn the oven up for the last two hours to 300 degrees to get a little more color on them. And I pulled them out of the oven when they were right about to hit 200 degrees internal. And what I'm gonna do now is just set them into a pot, basically anything that has a lid like this. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of this fat over them, keep them nice and moist, just seems like a good idea to me. Just a little. Now I'm gonna cover this and let it sit for like an hour and a half, two hours. You don't really need to do this for that long, but it can only do it a lot of good. It cooks for so long slowly, right? It should have a long, slow rest as well. Now while this rests, let's make one of the first recipes I ever learned at the Sebastopol Brewing Company in Sebastopol, California. We're making Chipotle barbecue sauce and this is my go-to barbecue sauce. It is extremely good. All right, for the barbecue sauce, you guys know how to dice an onion, right? No, here we go. Chop the whole thing in half. And you just take a little bit off the bottom and peel, clean your board. Now we just slice like this. Because this chipotle barbecue sauce is getting blended, you don't have to really be too precise with this. It doesn't really matter that much. And then we'll just slice this way. And down here, you know, you can always just, right? Set a pot over medium low heat and just add a tiny bit of cooking oil. Now we're gonna sweat these onions, which just means to cook them without any color. We'll add a little bit of salt to help that process. And after about eight minutes, these onions are soft and a little bit translucent. We're gonna add apple cider vinegar, malt vinegar. This is really the stuff in here, I'm telling you. Ketchup, some dark soy sauce, brown sugar, molasses. That's gonna give it a really nice dark color that I love. Honey, of course, chipotle. That's where all the heat is coming from. Ooh, yeah. I like it spicy. You could add less if you want. And then just some onion powder and a little garlic powder and just a little bit of water. Now we'll give that all a really good mix and return to the stove to simmer away. So this has been bubbling away just a touch over low heat for about 25 minutes now. I like the way it looks. It's nice and thick. We're gonna go ahead and strain out these onions. We'll just take a bowl with a strainer here. <sighs> yeah, and just pour that through. So these onions have basically done their job that I wanted them to do. So there's no need for them anymore. And we're just gonna work that through. Wow, I filled it up really high. That's okay. You can just push it through. Even a spoon would work really well for this. Oh my gosh, this sauce is just ridiculous. Oh. And these onions are delicious, actually. I'm not gonna throw them away. In fact, why don't we put some on the sandwich itself? Why not, right? Freestyle while you cook, you know what I mean? Like, there's no rules here. Just good fundamentals. So we'll just push this all through and save these 
these flavor-packed onions here. Oh my gosh, they look really good. Put that on a burger, put that on whatever. And here we are left with the most incredible barbecue sauce. I love the thickness. It's gonna thicken up a little bit more as it cools down, but this is nice for me. You guys have got to try this one. Oh, I've literally tasted it so many times while it was cooking. It is just that good. You just wanna drink it. My friends, I am giving away a ton of free jerky for amazing flavors created by me. Now this jerky is not dropping until July 14th, but in the meantime, you can sign up for the giveaway. There's a link in the description. You can just click that and sign up for your chance to win. I've been looking forward to this. Now while that barbecue sauce cools down, let's shred up this pork. Let's see if that bone comes out pretty easily. Might just have to, ooh, ooh, oh. Oh my gosh. This meat right here that's just resting along that bone is like absolutely the best and most tender part. Let's just taste it. Melt in your mouth. Although everything needs to be mixed so that seasoning on the edge gets distributed throughout all the meat. It's cool that we made this in the oven and it actually looks like proper kind of barbecue. Obviously it's better in a smoker. The reason I haven't done that is because very few of you have a smoker. If I was just doing this on my own and not filming a video, I would have done it in the smoker for sure, but I want everybody to be able to do this. So let's just, oh man, look at that. Oh gosh, all oh, the bark, I'm, oh, this crispy fat. Oh my, I gotta just eat a little bit of that. Oh, oh, the edge is insane. Look at that. Oh, this is perfect. I like that it's not super overcooked either. I kind of like bigger chunks when I'm doing this. I don't want super shredded meat. And also I'll show you a trick later to make for the best sandwich. So we're just gonna shred all of this up. If you want to get some of the fat out like this, if you don't like it, you can remove that a little bit. Just look at that. Oh, 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 oh. So satisfying, wow. This is about how I like it right here. Maybe I'll break it up a little bit more, but I'm telling you, when you get these bigger chunks in there, it just makes for a better mouthfeel when you're eating the sandwich. So you get a bit of different textures instead of everything just being the same. And at this point, you wanna taste it for seasoning. It might actually need a little seasoning, which is amazing because of the amount we put on there. Now it is really nicely seasoned, but it needs a tiny bit more. I'm just doing a little less than a teaspoon of salt. It just needed that, right? And that's just intuition. You just taste it and you're like, yup, simple as that. Mm. That's perfect for me. I don't want it any more broken up than that. The only thing left to do is to make the most simple American coleslaw, which is the perfect accompany, accompany, uh, accompaniment, am I saying that right? Maybe to this pork. And then we shall finish this epic burger sandwich. It's on a bun, so I guess it's a burger. It's awesome. For the perfect slaw dressing, this is all you need to do. Apple cider vinegar, and into that we're gonna add a little white sugar. Also use honey if you want, and the salt. And hopefully this vinegar will definitely dissolve the sugar and a little bit of the salt, and that will just really help this dressing come together without having any kind of little sugar or salt pieces in there. Now, we just simply add that to some mayonnaise. I like to make my own. There's a video right there if you wanna learn how to make it in the corner. Although to each their own, do whatever you like. And the last thing is simply celery seed. You gotta have the celery seed straight in. And I'm telling you, for the standard American slaw dressing, this is it. This is all you're ever gonna need to do. All right, now to finish the coleslaw, I'm simply just gonna do a little bit of carrot. And what I like to do here is just slice it into these pieces like so. Then we're gonna take the trusty mandolin. Oh, I'm getting the guard, man. I'm getting the guard. And we'll just slice it into nice little planks this way. And then with these, we're just gonna stack a few up like this and just slice through into these nice little shoestring pieces. Really small, right? And I just like this more than grating it. Of course, you can just grate it, that is easier. But for me, these are just absolutely glorious. Now, I just have some cabbage here. I'm gonna slice that into quarters. It was already halved. And this is where mandolins come in super handy. So we're just gonna shave it on here as well. Of course, you could do this with a knife. It's just, you're never gonna be as consistent as the mandolin, easy as that. Now, I'll just go in here with a little bit of salt some Sergeant Gilbert pepper, and then just dress it up with some of your dressing. You can go kind of heavy with this. Should be nice and juicy. A little more. Oh man, I'm telling you, that is just beautiful. You know, sometimes I'll add red cabbage to this as well, but today this will be fine. And there's your coleslaw. Glorious, beautiful. Here I have a nice little brioche bun, and usually I would butter this and toast it, but this has a curvature to it, so it won't be flat on the pan. So I'm gonna use this grill pan, a little bit of avocado oil. I like these sprays, they're good for a lot of stuff. Spray it up. We'll just toast it up in here. About medium heat, maybe a touch under. All right, just about three minutes here. It's looking pretty crunchy. Let's do this thing. Go in here with our juicy pork, just stacked. Some of those onions, remember, that we strained out? Nothing wrong with those. Oh, it's like an onion jam. Of course, you can put cheese, pickles, whatever you want, but I think we've done enough. Going with our barbecue sauce here. Oh my gosh. And of course, our coleslaw here. That's really gonna balance it out. Wow. And we cap it. 
Woohoo! Oh my god. Well, I'd say we're looking pretty good here, my friends. Time to give this a taste. Well, this is pretty exciting. Oh my gosh. Hello, my friend. Hello. Mmm. <coughs> oh! God tier. You gotta make this, my friends. This is just so freaking good. Mmm. <coughs> oh. Oh! All right, my friends, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. You know the deal. Hit that like button. Drop a comment if you so wish. And turn on notifications. Sorry about the earbud. If you want to be a psycho. And until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you and I'm out.